The Infinity Tools seven piece master crown molding router bit set gives you everything you need to make beautiful and unique crown moldings for your projects, whether you're working on a piece of furniture or a room remodel. Each of the seven bits in this set have been specifically chosen to allow you to make your crown molding with the material face down against your router table, making it much easier to get clean, accurate, and safe results. The set also includes a wood storage box to keep your bits safe and organized when not in use. The first step in creating your own custom crown molding is to determine the profiles that you will use to make your crown. First, we take the crown molding edge bit and determine how thick our workpiece will be that we'll make our crown molding from. However, thick our workpiece is will determine how much width we need to allow for the crown molding edge. In our case, we're using three quarter inch thick stock, so we will allow three quarters of an inch in width for our crown molding. Next, we will choose the profile bit or bits we will use to make our crown molding. If we're making a simple crown with only a single cove, we can just add the width of that cove bit to three quarters of an inch of width we need for our molding edge and that's how wide our workpiece needs to be. If we're making a complex crown using two or even three of the profile bits to make a complex crown molding, we simply add the cutting widths of each of those three bits to the three quarters of an inch we need for our crown molding edge, and we're ready to cut our stock to size. With our material cut to width and thickness, we can head over to the router table and start creating our crown. The first bit we'll use is the crown molding edge bit to create the proper bevels on the edge of our crown so that the crown molding has the proper spring angle when installed. This bit creates a 52 degree and a 38 degree bevel on the edges of our workpiece. When setting the bit height, we want to ensure that the center line of the workpiece is centered in the V of the router bit. Once we have the height set, we can use a ruler to set our fence using the ruler against the bearing to make sure we get a perfect setting every time. In order to produce clean and safe results while making crown molding, we always recommend using proper work holding techniques. Tools like the Jessam Clear Cut Stock Guides or the Bow Products Feather Pro are two great ways to ensure not only safe operation while milling our stock, but also produce cleaner, vibration-free results. It's also important to make sure to set your router speed to the proper RPM for each of the bits in this set. Because there are several different diameters of bits included in this set, you wanna make sure to set your router's speed appropriately. With our crown molding edges complete, we can mark for our profile for our simple crown molding. We're gonna be using a Cove crown molding router bit, so we install that in our router table. Then we take our crown molding blank and mark the edges of the field or flat portion that's left on our crown molding. Then we measure and mark the center line of the field. We use this center line to align with the center line in our router bit and set our fence accordingly. Be sure to make all your profiles in multiple passes. These bits remove a lot of material, so we wanna take our time, make three or even four passes with each bit to expose the profile each bit creates. A good trick for setting the router bit for your final pass is to use a ruler and line it up with the edge of the profile on each of the bits. This allows you to very accurately set the height of your bit for the final pass to get perfect results. For a complex crown, the method is the same as it is for a simple. We first mark the edges of our field and then we mark the edges of the cutting diameter for each of the three bits we'll use to make the crown. Once we've marked the cutting diameter of each bit, we can go in and mark the center line for each of those bits and use that center line to set up with the center line of each of the profiles for our crown. One thing to keep in mind when laying out the profiles for your complex crown moldings that use two or more router bits to create is how you want the crown molding to sit against the ceiling and the wall and which elements of your crown molding you want at the top and which you want at the bottom. Because of the different bevels made by the crown molding edge bit, you wanna make sure to lay these out and label them appropriately so you don't accidentally put the profile you want at the bottom of your molding at the top and vice versa. 
Once you have everything laid out and marked accordingly, all that's left is to install each bit one at a time into the router table and create those profiles in multiple passes. When making your complex crown moldings, be sure to keep an eye on your router bit speed as you switch between the smaller and larger diameter bits. You wanna ensure that you have the proper RPM for each bit while you make the molding to get the best results and not cause any damage to the workpiece or to the bits themselves. With our milling complete at the router table, we can use a Merca Merlon scuff pad to sand out any imperfections in our molding. Merlon scuff pads do a great job at getting into those tight and hard to sand areas to produce a nice smooth surface ready for paint or stain. If you'd like to make your own crown molding, be sure to head over to infinitytools.com where you can pick up the Infinity 7-piece Ultimate Crown Molding Router Bit Set. Also, check out our blog where you can see more great designs that we came up with while using this set in our shop.